Hello, this is a video I actually thought I had done already. Uh, in a really simple control system, you can have two water heating elements, and uh, the first one would be connected all the time. And uh, this, this could also be an MPPT controller uh, out here, uh, if you want to extend the uh, current range of it. Uh, but anyways, this uh, first heater is on all the time. But the second heater is in when uh, the circuit sees more than a set amount of current. So if you get over 50% uh, of your panel's current, you might want to switch to this one or, or wait till about 60 or 70%. Uh, but uh, this is a very simple control circuit. And uh, this uh, comparator... Uh, if you like, if you had a, an, an LM324, you could do a number of pots and progressively turn on. You know, you could have a four, five heater system if you wanted. So it's uh, kind of convenient. This uses a 50 millivolt shunt. I mean, a 75 millivolt, 50 amp shunt. Uh, these are on eBay for a couple bucks. Uh, if you notice, they'll have a little calibration notch here, and you know, this is 1.5 millivolts per amp, which takes a bunch of amplification. And if you want to make it even more sensitive, uh, you could widen this notch a little bit and put a notch here, a notch here. So, you know, the uh, current's doing an S curve. So maybe you could get it up to two or three millivolts per amp, uh, much more sensitive. But it's a basic amplifier circuit using an LM358. And, uh, this produces a gain and gives you about 0.3 volts per amp. So here's your PV. Uh, current comes in this side, goes that side. So this is a positive voltage coming in. Uh, you isolate it with this 100K resistor. That almost also ensures that you have a little bit of current passing. Uh, every op amp has a little uh, current le leakage going out. And this ensures that you always got a little bit of a positive voltage here. So you're not starting out you know, fully off. You need an LM358 or uh, or 324, 324, something that'll measure down to zero on the inputs. So, like a 740, 741 wouldn't wouldn't work at all. But anyways, you come out of this, and like I said, this is about 0 0.3 volts per amp. Uh, you could power this off a. You know, a lot of wall warts uh, work fine at uh, 60 or more volts that uh, are switching supplies. And, uh, you know, that could power this, and that could be your reference voltage. But, you know, you want to come out with some voltage here, which compares to the voltage that you would want to see when you, when you switch. Uh, this is a little feedback here. It's positive feedback, because you don't want this thing sitting there near a certain current and oscillating. Uh, so when it does switch, it throws a little positive signal coming back and switches even higher. So it gives you uh, a, a nice uh, transition. And then, you know, you can drive a FET or you could probably, if it's a low enough current, you know, if it's only about 6 milliamps or something like that, you could drive a solid state really. But, you know, FETs are so cheap. You know, you can get a good... I put a couple FETs in parallel, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, for only about a buck or two. Far cheaper than a solid state relay. So here's the circuit right here. If we haven't destroyed in the meantime. And I got an external power supply. Let's look at this voltage here. You'll see it's about six tenths of a volt. I'll turn the current down, and so about 1.5 amp it switches. And that's all there is to the circuit. Just a LM358, a normal amplifier gain, uh, giving you a 
a relatively good signal that you can switch on and you know you have to create your own little voltage reference source and this can be from the uh, 12 volts that you supply to the op amp or you can have a NLM 431 provide a two and a half volt reference and again if you have uh, an LM 324 you'll have uh, two extra op amps and uh, you can drive uh, two more current ranges So thanks for watching. Uh, any questions, please ask.